Hi, Mike Ricker with Crash of Rhinos Painting. And today we're in Peoria, Arizona on a project. And we're going to be talking about gloss and sheen and are there differences? Are they the same thing? How does it affect my project? What what gloss or sheen should I use on a specific application? So we'll get into to all of that. I do have some notes here because there's actually some really specific details I wanna make sure I'm accurate about when I'm talking about this. So first of all, there is actually a, a, te a technical difference between gloss and sheen. They're, they're aspects of the same, uh, the same thing within the painting process. Uh, but there is a slight difference. The, what happens is we have a, a, a device that measures this. And if you use the device at a 60 degree angle, it has a single beam of light that comes out. It refracts off of that. There is a receptor that collects that. And the number of units that go into that receptor determine the amount of gloss. So 60 degrees is gloss, and 85 degree angle is used to actually measure sheen. So they are slightly different, and they do measure different things. Sheen is really only measured on the lower end of the scale. So the, the flats and you know a velvet and up to an eggshell is about the limit. So you're never gonna have a sheen measurement for semi-gloss or gloss or high gloss or anything like that. So it's, it's a bit of a, a technical differentiation there. For the purposes of this and what we're talking about in residential painting, we're gonna use the words interchangeably because uh, it's, it's very common and, and most people are okay with that. So the first thing we're gonna do is you often hear the words, uh, you know, I'm gonna use a flat, or an eggshell or a semi-gloss or different manufacturers will have a, you know, it's a luster or a low luster or a high luster. These are all just, just, just words that are describing something along that scale. The problem is, is these manufacturers don't, <clears throat> excuse me, adhere to the, uh, the same exact scale with that. And one manufacturer might use luster and another one doesn't. So you don't really know what that scale is. So some of the people that develop this and put out some standards are what's called the Master Painter Institute. And they've actually developed a seven uh, level grouping of that. And we're gonna go uh, for this, they actually have sheen and gloss. We're gonna go over just gloss. <coughs> so gloss level one has a maximum number of units of five. And that's what we would call a flat or a traditional matte finish. So it's very flat, very matte finish. Gloss level two goes from, uh, has a maximum uh, number of units of 10. And it's what we call a high side flat um, or potentially even a velvet uh, color. Gloss level three, 10 to 25. So already you can see that there's a jump here. The first two units went from five to 10. Now this one, a single unit has a 15 unit spread on there. And that's what we would call, it's a traditional eggshell finish. And then we're gonna go to 20 to 35 is a satin. Now you may notice that I just said that eggshell was 10 to 25 and a satin goes from 20 to 35. So there is a little bleed over there in the 20 to 25 uh, receptor range. Then we get into uh, what is the biggest jump of all out of it all. It's the semi-gloss, and that's a group five. That goes from 35 to 70 units. So it's a big jump in there. Then we get group level six, which is a traditional gloss, which is 70 to 85. And then finally, a high gloss, which is more than 85 units. And uh, that, that, those last two, um, are, are not a very normal or traditional paint to use. Um, th those are extremely high gloss levels, going to have a very, very shiny finish, and there's really only a very few applications that it might be appropriate for. So, so that's the scale. That's, that's, what it, uh, that's what it's used for. So when you're looking at these numbers, that's, that's what, they, uh, what's, what they deal with. You can see, especially in the, the best way to look at this is if you're ever looking at a sheen, 
um, you need to look at it or a gloss you need to look at it sideways so if you look at this wall and if you look at it straight on you're not going to actually be able to tell the sheen of it as well what you need to do is actually look at it from an angle and you can see that difference so this is where and we're going to give you uh, i'm going to give you an example and then we're going to go to some other aspects of how you should use sheen and what applications so if i'm doing a touch-up for example on a wall let's say i'm doing the inside of a house and my walls are painted uh, eggshell and i only have let's say a flat paint but it's the same color to touch up and i touch that up most likely i'm not going to be able to see it if i'm looking straight on at it but if i'm walking down that hallway i'll see exactly where that paint of that that uh, touch-up uh, area was it'll be very very obvious even though the color is exactly the same so let's talk a little bit about gloss the applications of it and where it's good and uh, what issues you can have with with either side of those gloss levels so um, there is uh, there's a philosopher out there that says that there's actually he's a philosopher and an economist that says there actually are no solutions to things there's only trade-offs so that's the same thing with gloss as well. So one of the values, one of the benefits of a higher gloss is you have, uh, it, it's, a, it's a bit harder. It has more durability. It has uh, an, an ability to be cleaned easier um, as well. But the trade-off with that for the, the benefit that you get from this side, you have on this side, you have uh, you have that when you see uh, errors or problems or defects in a wall, those are going to become much, much more pronounced and uh, visible. So uh, the, if you don't want to see those, a flat paint is one of the best things to use. In fact, that's why um, if you buy a new home uh, in Arizona here, this is the way it works, um, you're going to get one choice typically and that's to have flat paint on the inside of your house. In, in, the, the, in the majority of homes that are built in the Phoenix market, we use on the inside, you know, and again, we only do residential exterior painting here at Crash Rhinos, but I wanna go over what some of the applications are for both interior and exterior. Um, the, the, uh, the, the typical finish we have on drywall is called, uh, uh, is called a, is a troweled stuck or a, a a troweled finish or a knockdown, sometimes orange peel, that's not used as much anymore, but it gives a texture on there. You really never see what we would call a smooth wall. Now, part of the problem with that is, is a smooth wall is excellent. I, I love smooth wall on a drywall finish, but you can see a lot of the uh, imperfections in drywall if that, if that wall's not straight, if the, if the drywall is curved at all, you're gonna see all of that stuff with a, such a high finish on that drywall. If you put a higher sheen on that, it's gonna be even more pronounced. So that's gonna be the trade-off with that. Now the flip side is, let's say you have uh, three little ones running around your house and you know, they've got you know, ink and dirt and grease and stuff on their hands and they're going around touching the walls. If you have a traditional flat paint, the ability to clean that is going to be compromised a bit. And so it's going to be much, much more difficult uh, to clean th those surfaces. So you'll see a lot of times um, in, in a house where they're going to put eggshell. That's very common out here is to use an eggshell finish on the interior of your house. Um, it gives you a little bit of that blend between the durability or durability, washability of it, but it's not so shiny where it's kind of blinding. Now, we're going to move from the inside to the outside of a house. So a lot of people, because they think that, you know, hey, I have eggshell on the inside of my house and it's really great, it's durable, that it's a great finish to put on your outside. Here's the problem with that. On the inside of your house, you're only talking about indirect light or artificial light any of those things so direct lighting versus indirect or even the change of a bulb at times using a soft white bulb versus a warm white bulb can change the way 
color looks, the way sheen actually is perceived or gloss as well in there. And so any kind of lighting change can make a huge difference in how you perceive that. When you get to the outside, there's no indirect lighting. Everything is in direct lighting and full sun. You know, excessive, of course, if you're under a patio cover or on the north side of a house where the sun isn't hitting it, but you're gonna have that full, full light effect. And even an eggshell or, you know, that, that which is not a high sheen, like a semi-gloss, can be very, very shiny. If I have a wall that, an entire wall that's a, a sand finish, um, it's not gonna have, you know, it's not gonna be perfect. That's the nature of stucco and houses. Is everything is not, uh, you know, to within, you know, a millimeter of being straight. And any kind of uh, variation in that wall, um, any kind of uh, difference in texture at all, any minor differences, which you're going to see often, that's the nature of a sand finish. You're going to see those issues, those imperfections when you're using a higher sheen. So we use down here, we actually use Evershield from Dun Edwards, um, and it's a Dun Edwards flat, but it's on the high slide of group level one. So we is a Sparta Shield, which is their number two paint, excellent product as well. And just by the way, all these products are going to be in the description with links below to them. But a uh, but a but a Sparta Shield is what we call a dead flat. So it comes in at about a one percent sheen, very very flat matte finish, completely appropriate. In fact, we have requests for it at times for some of the homes that might be in you know North Scottsdale or Cave Creek that are a territorial or Santa Fe style home. Um, and you, you want no shininess at all. It is completely a flat paint. Evershield is still technically a flat, comes in at four, right to 5%, um, but it has enough of a sheen where it gives you a little bit of that, uh, that kind of shininess, if you want to use that word, even though technically it's flat, because we're seeing it in the direct sunlight. If I were to put this on the inside, it would be actually a bit harder to tell the difference between the two. Um, in there. So those are the big differences between sheen. The, the things that you know you would typically find that's appropriate is again we use an Evershield flat on the outside of homes. Doors we're typically going to use an eggshell. Uh, it finishes a little bit better than a semi-gloss. We can certainly use semi-gloss on uh, on doors and garage doors and those kind of things. Typically we use an eggshell though. Um, and uh, what we get with that is, is those, any entry exit points into your house, that's where you're gonna typically have handprints and basketballs hitting garage doors and those kind of things. And it's a little bit easier to get those clean when you do that. So that's, uh, that's a pretty good summary of, of what sheen and gloss is, the applications, uh, for them. So I hope this helped. If you do have any questions about sheen or gloss or anything with uh, any painting process, which you feel free just to contact us here at Crash of Rhinos Painting and we hope this helped. Have a great day.